RX-8 Advanced includes both a standalone application with a collection of processing modules, which I'll be showing most of the time, and a selection of real-time plugins, which bring many of those modules functions directly into the DAW of your choice. The standalone version is dominated by the central display, which includes both a traditional waveform view of the audio signal and a spectrogram view. A slider lets you favor one or the other. The spectrogram view represents the time, frequency, and amplitude of the audio signal. At the default settings, amplitude is represented by color hue and intensity from darker blue, the softest parts of the sound, to bright orange, the loudest parts of the sound. The scale to the right shows the equivalent levels in dB. Naturally, time is the horizontal axis, and frequency is displayed as the vertical axis. You can customize the display in the Spectrogram Settings dialog box, where you can adjust the color scheme and time, amplitude, and frequency scales, among other things, including resolution. I'll just leave everything at the default settings. Of course, you can zoom the display in both horizontal and vertical axes, and the vertical zoom is independent for the waveform and spectrogram views. As you can see, this also affects the waveform display's independent amplitude scale. Option clicking any of these controls will return them to their default settings. Just below the display are a number of additional zoom tools, along with a set of selection tools for manual application of spectral processing. Normally, you'd make a selection or selections and then initiate processing, but the Instant Process option automatically applies the selected process as soon as you make the selection, speeding up the workflow for situations where you feel confident in your initial selections. At the bottom, you have time, transport controls, level meters, and selection readouts. Above the main display, there's a waveform overview of the entire audio file for easy navigation. It includes a box indicating the section currently visible in the main display. At the very top are tabs for all open files. These can even be processed together, though with some limitations, thanks to Composite View, which I'll cover at the end of the course. Finally, on the right, is the list of processing modules. This is where you select the modules you want to work with, or set up a module chain for multiprocessing. Each module has its own control panel where you can preview the effect. Pick myself up from the pavement. Dial up and compare different settings. Pick myself up from the pavement. And then finally, hit render. If you decide to set up a chain, you'd create a chain of processors that you want to apply as a group. Plus adds a new module. You can rearrange them, bypass them individually, and open each one's control panel, all from the module chain window. If you assemble a chain you want to reuse, like this chain that might be suitable for general dialog processing, you can save it as a preset and recall it at any time. Of course, you can also save presets for individual modules as well. You can get to the Preferences window via the main menu bar, and the question marks in each module window access help options. In the main menu bar, there are some additional options. The File menu has the usual commands for file management. RX can save its own file that references the audio file, or export the processed audio file as an independent finished file. The Edit menu provides a number of editing and selection shortcuts. It'll be worth taking a little time to get to know these once you get comfortable working in RX. They can speed up some editing tasks. There are several overall view options, in addition to the spectrogram display settings, and another way to access the modules, transport controls, additional windows, and the help files. Coming up next, I'll take a look at using RX's real-time plugins in a DAW and integrating the standalone application with the DAW via RX Connect.